I'm Luke Hill for Kick Guru. And I'm Leo for Kick Guru. So we're here in our virtual Leo and real Luke setup again. And we're going to discuss some cool topics, I guess. Let's get we're, into no, it. No, we're going to do a topic, one topic. We're yes. going to do Zen 3. We're going to try and do 10 to maybe 15 minutes of a thing. And this is going to be Zen 3. This is to keep us focused because otherwise we ramble. We will get sidetracked very, very quickly, yes. So, okay, we're going to do a topic, like Leo says. And just, again, another point out, if I look over here and then look over the other way, it's because I'm just managing the setup, so I'm not looking anywhere else. I'll try and keep my eyes fixed on the camera. Of course, we've got Leo, who's the man of the moment, so all attention on him, I say. Hey, what? I don't know why that should be. Um, so the setup, the setup for this conversation, Luke and myself have been discussing, obviously, the various Zens uh, for a few years now, actually. And we've been discussing Zen 3 between ourselves for a little while because of the rumours that uh, AMD is going to be doing Zen 3 in 2020, which has been really. And just recently, Jim from Adore TV had confirmation of this and put up a short video basically with the information he's got, which seems completely go uh, golden and confirms one small point of information that basically just completes the picture, which is more cores per complex. And that's it. What does that mean, Luke? Well, I guess fundamentally more cores per complex, I guess number one, if you're keeping it within the same package dimensions, it does open up the uh, potential, I guess, for uh, higher core counts. Although that would depend actually, because I guess the core complexes would have to be larger uh, than they are now to fit more cores in unless they shrink in the size of the cores. So You see, it, the, here's the funny thing. Luke's immediately gone to level 12 of the conversation. I thought we're going to start the first thing, which is how many cores are there in a complex at the moment? And if you double it, how many do you get then? Good point. Right, okay. So <laughs> skipping back, maybe we'll edit this, maybe not. Skipping back. So right now you get up to four cores per core complex, or so CCX for the Zen 2 based processors, you then typically have two CCXs, depending on which chip you're using to make a CCD. So that's a core, uh, core die basically. And then obviously you combine that with the IO die and that's how you get your single CCD, eight core parts or below. And that's how you can get your dual CCD, 12 core, 16 core Ryzen 9 3900X or 3950X for example. So, like Leo or, says, or indeed a sixty-four core thread ripper. Well, yes, yeah, sixty-four cores of using the dual complex, so the dual core complex CCDs. But yeah, let's let's not focus on thread ripper right now because otherwise we're gonna, it's gonna be a numbers game, isn't it? With the uh, what is it, the eight CCDs and single massive I/O die of the thirty-nine ninety X. But fundamentally, what more cores per CCX means is that you could, I guess, have a single CCX chip, which would be up to eight cores, which you currently don't have. And the only significant difference that appears to make at the moment is cash, in that you have the same amount of cash in total, but because the cash is per core, the pool of cash would appear to be shared uh, between all eight cores rather than this bunch of four cores has some cash and this bunch of four cores has some cash, you get cash. Yeah, that's correct. So the L2 cache is in close proximity to the cores, isn't it? So it's on the mm. cores, whereas the L3 cache is on the CCX or CCD, if you prefer. So mm. yes, like you said, you get a bundle of cash. Now, obviously, if they're increasing the amount of cash to keep with the same amount of cash per core, then like you say, that would be... Uh, that would mean more cash on the CCX, which again can have benefits. Because keeping... Uh, the resources within the CCX can have a significant benefit when it comes to latency. Because right now, obviously, we're dealing with the Infinity Fabric links to communicate between the CCXs and the, the chiplets, if you prefer. Also, if you can bring everything locally, then you can reduce that latency penalty. And that is one of the areas where Zen Plus and Zen 2 made massive improvements mm. versus Zen 1, but Intel still... It seems, based on certain testing and especially based on the gaming data, it seems like Intel on its um, monolithic, i.e., non, which is, what is it, non mesh architecture processors, mm. so the mainstream processors we see now with the Ring Bus, they do have a latency uh, benefit over the Zen 2 design. And the, the thing is that Zen 3 was, I think the word would be promised to be a brand new architecture. And I think we can all agree that this is not 
a brand new architecture. However, this should bring uh, Jim's figure is 10 to 15 percent IPC, which seems entirely plausible. But I would expect little else because we're not getting a change in SMT. So still two cores per thread. We're not going to get different core count. We're presumably still using AM4. Whether or not we get a new chipset remains to be seen. Uh, basically, th this seems to me to be tweaking, uh, perfectly decent tweaking, perfectly valid tweaking, but tweaking, not a new architecture. So the idea, 10 to 15 percent and a, a tweaked, modified uh, fabrication process, sure, absolutely fine, but yeah. not earth shaking. No, it doesn't seem earth shattering. So I think, was it Forrest who said, with respect mm. to one of the AWS contracts or something like that, that Zen 3 was going to be a new architecture mm. I, think, I think was that about six months ago i think it was kind yeah. of q3 q4 last mm. year wasn't it um yeah i guess it kind of it depends on what would you consider to be a new architecture would you consider going from zen to zen plus a new architecture well perhaps perhaps not but this well, looks no, I, like the I, adjustment I, we're going to see here i guess well the, the the original zen to zen plus are 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer i don't think anybody regarded as being a new architecture uh, that that was a tweak, and it was a perfectly good thing to do, and we were very happy to see it. It's like support for a faster memory yeah. is not in your... In fact, if AMD had somehow magically added support for DDR5 memory with Zen 2, so Zen 3 was Zen 2 plus DDR5, and uh, it's not going to be, it's going to be DDR4, I don't think I'd count that as new architecture. I'd count it as a significant change, but I personally wouldn't count that as new architecture. Yeah, I, I think that's perfectly fair. I see what you're saying. I think mm. some of the big improvements from Zen to Zen Plus were the adjustments for the latency when they saw mm. the intercache latency. Mm. Uh, so again, like you see, kind of tweaks. But I guess it comes back to this point of okay, well, you know, it depends on your um, on how you define a new architecture. But I guess kind of rolling it back a bit. Do we even need a new architecture? Oh, no, 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 not yeah. at all. This is this thing. It's a little like, uh, as we've said to each other a great many times, if AMD says the blah, blah processor will turbo or whatever to uh, for boost rather to 4.4 gigahertz mm -hmm. and it goes to 4.35, I'm disappointed. If they said it boosts to 4.3 and it boosts to 4.35, I'm happy. So it's it's... It's you've said this thing. I'm judging you by what you have said in public, and it's not doing it. So yeah. thanks to Forrest saying, if it, uh, I'm sure it was Forrest saying, Zen 3, whole new architecture. But, like, well, I don't think it is. Now Everybody's you, got excited and waving their hands about with yeah, that, yeah, I guess, haven't they? Exactly. Whereas if it said, honest to God, boys, we've done great work. We've got new consoles coming out, which we'll cover in a different conversation. We've got this, we've got that, we've got the other. We've got, you know, uh, big Navi graphics coming at some point and so on and so forth. Give us a break. What do you want? Yes, there'll be an update coming and it will be a bit better. It'd be like, fair enough. That would be perfectly reasonable, I yeah, think. Yeah, but, but instead, there's this terminology, this whole new architecture. It's like, okay, well, you said it. No one even asked that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. Although, I think, um, and I, I haven't watched Jim's video yet, uh, mm. and I know Jim does some really good work on a, on a door. Um, but when you mentioned process node so i think that will be interesting so did he mention in the video if the uh refined is going to basically is a seven nanometer plus with tsmc yeah, oh yes but that's the thing isn't it where tsmc is um I, I forget the terminology because what amd had been calling seven nanometer plus meaning in the intel sense of tweaked refined version of the existing mm -hmm. and apparently tsmc has something they're calling seven nanometer plus which is something else so ah, therefore okay. It's a, it's a nomenclature thing. It's, it's just a naming thing. So a refined version of, and therefore presumably not yielding anything particularly special. So as to whether the 10 to 15% that's been spoken about, whether that's going to be a reduction in latency, uh, better use of cache, increasing clock speed, uh, for yes. example. I mean, because if, if the new processors uh, will run consistently, at what, what number would be appropriate to an 8 core processor? Well, I guess um, kind of if you were at mid four gigahertz, which the current eight cores don't do. So again, this is an area where Intel still has an advantage. And I'm talking all core frequencies, not boost frequencies. If you up that all core to something like mid, mid four gigahertz, that would directly translate into about a 10 percent performance improvement. That would be pretty much yeah, spot on. Yeah, if, if you did if you did a Ryzen, I guess, seven, uh, 
yeah, for God, what number? Ryzen 3700 X or 3800X. Yeah, except 4700X. Yeah, yeah. Then, and, and that was to run at 4.5 gigahertz, all cores, all threads. Job done. That, that would be quite uh, impressive, it, I think. Especially if it's AM4 drops into the current X570 motherboards on DDR4, PCI Express Gen 4, blah, blah, blah. Even if it wasn't backwards compatible to pre uh you know, the 400 series so, chipset. Yeah, or away. 300 series. Yeah, yeah or, or even that. Uh, no complaints from us. Yeah, I agree. I would actually Sorry, go as far on. as... I'm, I'm setting a roll for my own back. Unlikely to be complaints from us. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> you're always fine to complain, Leo. Let's not... Let's not, let's not uh, you know, beat around that bush. So. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But no, I would actually... I, I would strongly agree with it. I would go as far as saying I would hope that they would continue with the AM4 platform. There's no reason to change AM4 as far as I'm concerned. It's still fundamentally the best platform on the market and i know you can say trx40 because it's just an extension of am4 but am4 is the best platform on the market in my opinion you get gen 4 you get plenty of pcie connectivity you get smart allocation of on-chip resources whether it's pcie or nvme connections it's the best platform as far as i'm concerned before the uh, whole malware human malware thing blew up and the rumors were still uh, roadmaps were saying that uh, Zen 3 would be in 2020, and we were going like A, Y, B, will it? And really, and, and that's before the problems we've all had. Yeah. That uh, I, I think we were thinking Zen 3 would be late 2020 with the problems now. Obviously, it can slip to 2021, and no one yeah. can point a finger at AMD for that mm -hmm. whatsoever, seeing as it's something we're not even shouting for. Yeah. But if that happens, they do then get into a slightly gray area, which is that AM4 was always going to last until 2020. Mm -hmm. In the event Zen 3 comes along in 2021, they do have the option, which I hope they don't take, of moving on from AM4. In this instance, I don't think they have any need to do it. I hope to goodness they'll stick with AM4. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go. Yeah, I agree. So, so with regards to your first point, that cadence makes sense because... Zen 1 was February 2017. Zen Plus was uh, April 2018. Zen 2, so Ryzen 3000, the next one, was uh, July 2020. So it's kind of this one year, two month, one year, three months, so 14 or 15 July, months July, cycle. Tw July 2020? 20, 2019, sorry. July 2019, correction there. So yeah, July 2019. So something around early Q4 uh, 2020. Makes perfect would, sense. Would have made perfect sense to keep up until, with the games. Uh, until we had the human malware. Uh, yeah, until the which issues, yeah. Adds a quarter to a half of a year, and that's entirely reasonable. And Although, of course. It, mm. Sorry, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, and, and then we've got this weird thing, of course. Now, Computex is currently scheduled to be it's September, isn't it? That's right, uh, September, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, that's now a big thing, but that's a bit early for Zen 3. Whether they start showing off stuff, I, I'm going to guess not. I, I, I'm picturing CES 2021 personally. I think that would be quite reasonable. And I wonder if that cadence that we initially thought of, thinking perhaps, you know, end of Q3, early mm. Q4 to keep up with the cycle, I wonder if that would have been realistic this year, given the consoles are going to be at that time mm. frame. And I know AMD will have done the bulk majority of the work for the consoles already, but that also means that it's work that potentially, obviously we know no details, but potentially hasn't been done on the desktop parts. Fundamentally, there's perhaps no need to do as much work as there is with the consoles, which are a brand new um, it, generation. Except as, as we know, a shark has to keep moving forward, otherwise it dies. And right now, AMD's a shark. So on the desktop side of things, I think there's almost a necessity, even though we're not shouting for it, I, I think AMD needs to kind of keep on adding and if they yeah. can come up with a processor that, that for example, is four and a half gigahertz, that's reducing one notable deficit to a uh, to Intel. It is, yes. Uh, as in, look at all these cores, look at this, look at that, look at the other, and the speed is there. It's like, oh, fair enough. Uh, at which point, you know, your criticisms of AMD's products will get even more tiny. Yes, they will. I th I think that's perhaps the only area that I could point to right now and say. You know, Intel still has a clear advantage when it comes to frequency. And it doesn't matter whether it's 14 nanometer or 7 nanometer. I mean, if you're just dropping in your PC and using it, that's somewhat of an irrelevance. The fact mm. of the matter is Intel's chips at the high end, kind of the segment of the market we're interested in, they are faster when it comes to clock speed. And clock speed is still important, especially mm. with games and the likes.
here's the other burning question. So if we're talking uh, Q1 2021 for Zen 3, which would be named presumably Ryzen 4000 on the desktop. Ah, you, but, but would it? Because that well, that year would... Is, is this year, Have I jumped well, your question there? Sorry. Well, that, that's kind of half of it. And the other half is, and do they need to move to like X670 chipset or something? That's a good point. So I guess... Ooh, okay, so on the first point, you would think... Because they've always been very clear, and, and I'm just going to go on record again, I hate the way they do the name in. Ryzen 1000 was clear, but then when it was Ryzen 2000, some of which was Zen Plus, some of which was Zen 1, then you've got Ryzen 3000, the desktop APUs are Zen Plus, the desktop CPUs are Zen 2. You've now got Ryzen 4000, which is Zen 2 CPU based for the laptop side of things. So they've always been clear that they want to keep it consistent by basically release year or product cycle if you prefer. That does throw them into quite a challenging situation. It does slip to 2021. That's a very good point, actually, because then Ryzen 4000 wouldn't have existed on the desktop if they jumped to 5000. Yeah, indeed. Uh, as people might say, the roadmap becomes forked. <laughs> yes, okay. Although we've seen some bizarre things with numbers in the past. Was it the, oh, the, yeah. uh, the GT, it was the 8 series, oh, wasn't it? The G cool. GTX 800 series, which was yeah. like OEM only and just yeah, a yeah, latent yeah. rebadge yeah, of the 700 yeah, series. Go, 700 goes to 900 and then you jump, right. from, you jump from 1,000 to 2,000 and yeah. so on. Yeah, yeah. right. No, uh, naming and numbering. However, I will say that AMD's naming system, generally speaking, is epic and I love it. Oh, these epic jokes are just oh, they're horrendous. <laughs> I really need to find the footage of you criticizing the epic name. Epic with a Y. Never have. Clearly never, never have. No, no, no. I've got a very short memory. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to recap, Jim, Jim's confirmation on, on Adored uh, is that Zen 3, either very late this year or early next year, essentially is a tweak rather than new architecture. And the uh, complexes go from four cores to eight the cache remains the same per core, fair enough. Uh, that that pretty much sums it up for me. Yeah, I, I don't think there is anything else that we're really crying out for. I mean, you could argue perhaps higher speed memory support because realistically you don't want to use above about, I know, 3600 or 3733, but is it really necessary? I, I, like you say, yeah, perhaps reducing the latency by increasing the number of cores and cache on the CCX and a boost in clock speed. I'd take those to any day of the week. In that case, it sounds like we can wrap this one up. We can say Zen 3, yep, bring it on. Looking forward to seeing AMD. It's going to be an interesting fight because I think Intel, you would think towards the end of this year, Intel's going to be coming back pretty hard. And I believe, suggested by the rumors, that there is a new architecture in the works. So, yeah, it could whole, heat up. Whole different, whole different conversation. because that, that, Indeed. Yeah, that big, big conversation. Absolutely. That's one we're going to have to tackle probably repeatedly. But yeah. um, we're, we're going to, on this one, we're going to keep the short suite and Zen 3 alone. So thanks for watching. I've been Luke Hill for Kikaru here with... Virtual Leo. The best Leo, as I always say. No, 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 I'm joking. I'm sorry, Leo. <laughs> he, can't, he can't give me a clip on the head, actually. It's true. It's actually. easier virtually. I'd call HR if that was the case. Anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like this video give us a like give us a thumbs up do all that youtube stuff you know subscribe if you want to keep in the loop in keep in the loop lose my voice here <laughs> keep it in, keep in the loop keep keep in the loop oh no nobody wants that that's just uh, no 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 <laughs> moving swiftly on uh make sure you check out the kickaroo website that helps us out visit our patreon page and buy a cool t-shirt if you want to wear the merch that we make see you next time